Hello, good afternoon, and welcome back to Music 110, Introduction to Audio Technology. Uh, today, we are continuing with the discussion from last week about signal flow, and uh, this should be a much, uh, hopefully this will be a briefer conversation. Uh, what, 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 how I'm going to continue this is we're going to learn about effects. Now, effects are totally related to signal flow, as you will soon find out. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to introduce you to a couple of effects, how to um, apply them in Studio One, and I'm just going to kind of encourage you to be experimenting with them, with uh, other effects. I'm just going to show you two today, but there are other effects that you can put on. Uh, okay, so uh, let's see. As a reminder, we we were talking about signal flow last time, last week. And the way we came to understand signal flow in the digital audio workstation environment was, was um, tracing the signal path from the track through the channel to the master fader. Um, and on the way, on the way that it, as it travels that path, it, uh, is, it goes through different phases, different, you could think of it as going through different gates, different yards. And uh, as it does that, that signal can be modified. And it is modified in a, in a particular order. So the path is also a sequence. So uh, we came to understand that when we are looking at the waveform in the track, that is the visual representation of the audio file that we have that that uh, we have imported into Studio One. We can then perform operations on that waveform within Studio One, like we can splice it, we can. Um, we can change the, the, the gain, we can put fades on it, we can pitch shift it, time shift it, all of the things that we learned about at, at the very, uh, right when we started all of this, all of that, ha all of those changes happen within the track. Okay, so then we saw how the, that output of the track is sent to a channel, and we started to see how um, we the chan on the channel we can change the panning, whether the track is being sent to the left or to the right, and we can change the volume. And we can automate those changes by um, by drawing uh, over the top of of, of a waveform that will then that information, those lines that we draw over the top of a waveform, will then be interpreted into changes in panning and volume in the channel. Now, um, we then saw how, uh, we then saw how after the signal leaves the channel, it travels all the way to the master and then out to the, our speakers. As this is all happening, when we start adding tracks and adding channels, all of these channels operate in the same way, where the signal path is going from top to bottom, and then you could think of it, it, it all dumps into this, into this, the main master signal. So it's like all of these uh, channels are dumping down here the, the dump truck picks them all up and then they all end up coming out uh, of our master and I think that will become a little clearer today because we're going to start looking at, at, at some mixing strategies of how to mix more than one channel at the same time so I'm going back through these slides to emphasize that um, the path of the signal matters if you if we're going to try to understand what's happening with effects which is what I'm going to be talking about today so I'm going to be looking at a couple of effects today in 
and talking about how they actually work in terms of signal flow and how the effect um, how the effect affects the signal. Uh, I'm only going to be talking about digital delay and distortion. However, there are other effects in Studio One that you can use. Uh, and I will also be talking about, so I'm on the, on the si slides, I'm only talking about digital delay and distortion. I will also talk, be talking about filters as soon as I move over to Studio One. But there are, all, there are other effects that you can use in there, and I'm going to be, at the, by the end of this, I'm going to be encouraging you just to start experimenting. Okay, I'm starting... To, I, I'm going to talk about digital delay and distortion first because I think that they are the most um, d clear rep rep representations of how an effect um, modifies a audio signal. So digital delay is like an echo. And uh, what how it works is, if we're thinking about it digitally, we have a signal flow that is in front of you, right? The signal is entering this delay line from the left and exits the output to the right. What happens is the there is a copy of the signal that is constantly being made and sent back into the input so that it's continually... Um, hearing copies of itself and reproducing copies of itself feeding back. So if you've heard the, the term feeding back before, I think these days we use it a lot because all of a sudden, you know, we're on Zoom all the time and sometimes we get that crazy like loud uh, feedback sound. It's th that that is what's happening by accident there. The the sound that is coming out of your computer speakers is being heard by Zoom put back into Zoom, then we hear that sound, and then that sound is then, you know, our microphones hear the sound of, of yours, sends back out to your, it, to your computer, and then feedback happens. Um, because the signal starts to add on top of itself. And so there are all these sorts of ways that we are, that we can control feedback. And in this case, when we're talking about delay, um, uh, the feedback is is intentional so and it's and the idea is to get an echo effect you can control the length of time that uh that the the, the signal is being delayed you can control how much of that delayed signal is re-entering the line but really what we have here is a loop right um if we are taking copies of an incoming signal and we are sending that copy back um, the same amount of, you know, the, so like if I'm taking a picture of a waveform every second, um, as soon as I take that picture, I just send it back. I just send it back a second. So it's like a copy of itself sort of like feeding into the same line. This will become really clear once, we, once I start demonstrating it. Um, the reason I'm showing this now is to emphasize that this is about the signal path. Example two that we're going to be looking at is distortion. And how distortion works is it modifies the waveform by essentially clipping off the peaks and troughs of it. So if you think about it like distortion is, is about loudness, when you start turning up the input of a sing signal into... Um, into whatever you're you're putting it into an amplifier a speaker whatever if you keep turning up to the input increasing the amplitude the w the sort of height and depth of the waveform is going to be increased right you're increasing amplitude uh, eventually you will hit the ceiling of that particular device and when you hit the ceiling that particular that the limit of of the the amplitude that that system can handle it starts squaring off the waveform. And that's gonna change the timbre, the sound quality of the waveform itself because you're changing the waveform. So this is how, this is basically how distortion works. You turn something up so 
loud that the system can't it has to start modifying this, the waveform itself and what that hap what ends up happening is we square off we square off the waveform the other result right so whatever is the 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 highest or the 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 amplitude that is the peaks and the troughs of the waveform will get squared off but the more we increase the distortion the more these tiny quieter wiggles will be amplified as well so here we see another example of a distorted waveform where these higher harmonics are emphasized because they can even bring they can even be brought up so if you see this first um this first waveform here on on the top uh, that's the original waveform um, the more that we increase the amplitude the more that the, 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 these smaller wiggles can become as big as the larger wiggles. So, um, so it isn't just that, so distortion, what distortion can do is it can increase the harmonic content or the high, these higher sounds that are, in the, that are in the original waveform and emphasize them. So when you think of a distorted guitar sound, that's really what's happening. It's like all of these higher harmonics, all of this higher information, and it makes it sound noisier, brighter, whatever it is. Okay, so let's just, those are just two examples. I, uh, and I wanted to show you the, the waveform representations just to, at first, because once I start digging into Studio One here, um, we aren't going to be able to really look at the output of the waveform. We're just going to be seeing the waveform in the track, and the effects that I'm going to be applying will be happening in the channel. So we're not going to see how the w the waveform has been modified the same way that we did when we were looking at audio effects that you apply directly to the waveform itself, like pitch shifting, like time stretching, like fades. So the the, the the modifications that are going that are, I'm going to be going over today um, happen in the tr in the uh, channel not in the track okay so what I've done uh, if you remember that like that jazz song that I used for the mp3 demo I chopped it up I just chopped up some um, so different like hits like the drums and the trumpets and stuff and I tried to make a new um, a new musical phrase out of it uh, and so what I'm going to do I'll play it and then I'll take you through all of the things that are happening here explain how I did it and and show you one how to manipulate these effects two how to mix all of these tracks together or all of these channels together and three we'll also look at some some interesting ways in which uh, we can uh, change audio within the track export that to a mix down and then bring it back in um, bring bring that mix down back in and then affect it further um, okay so let's just start with what I have here um, I don't know if you guys remember that the jazz song that I used for the MP3 demo, but it's it's a it's a jazz song with trumpets and drums and a lot of percussion. So I chopped that up and created this short little musical phrase that I have that will be looping. So um, it has this. You can tell right now that uh, the loop up here is just going to follow this block of music once I press start. So I have this little intro thing that's going to happen, and then we're going to hear the, the phrase loop. Um, you'll also notice that I have track number four muted. I'll explain why I have that muted later. Uh, but OK, so I'll, let me just play this. <laughs>
Uh, let me just dig into all the things that are happening here, and I think we can just go one, uh, one, tr one track or channel at a time, so that I can explain, uh, so that I can spl explain what I've done. So let's start with this top, tr this top track, which I have called rhythm, and the reason I'm calling it rhythm is because. Uh, is because it it holds all of that percussion stuff that you were hearing. Now, I the I'm going to turn off the effects that I have on this track, and I'm going to have us listen to just the track by itself. So so I've soloed the track here, which means uh, we're not going to hear any of these other uh, four these these other three. And I have also turned off the effects over here, and I'll ch I'll show you guys how to add effects in just a second. Um, and so this is what I started with uh, before. Uh, so this is really just I took one drum hit and I've pitch shifted it and then made a rhythm out of it. <laughs> So that's all it is. It's just that repeating rhythm. Um, I think I really just only pitch shifted the uh, the lower one. So the lower uh, hit that you hear is has been pitch shifted down, and it just repeats that. So what I did now that I have this, I can add effects, and um, the way that you add an effect to a track is you open up the browser window. Now, sometimes when it opens up, it might be on instruments or loops or, or whatever, but Studio One comes, um, Studio One comes with, like, with all of, it comes with all of this stuff. So, um, for now, we're just going to be looking at the effects and um, and what effects are are these. Here we see all these examples of all the effects that you can put on. So these are all effects that you can put into that you can insert into your signal chain, and they are going to affect the signal in some way. Where it's going to take an input, it's going to do some process to that input, and then have an output. So what you would do is, um, so right here, like if I wanted to add, say, a, um, let's say I wanted to add this Empire effect to my, to my rhythm track, right? Now, I, all I have to do is drag and drop this Empire effect over to the rhythm, uh, to my rhythm track. And I can do that either by dropping it here onto, um, directly onto the track. I can also drop it over in here. And what, the, what, if I drop it over into this track view to the left, this allows me to put it into a, di into a particular order of effects. So, if I drop this Empire effect onto my rhythm track in the track view, in the uh, inspector view, let's do that. Um, okay, so it automatically inserted this Empire effect after, as you can see over here. Remember, channels go from from uh, top to bottom. So uh, I have this, this view open and um, yeah, I have my inspector view open, so um, I'm able to see this channel. Uh, and that's, in order to do that, like all I do is kind of drag this this portion of the inspector view open. And what Studio One has done is automatically put this new effect after these other effects that I'd already put on. And the reason I know it's after is because the signal goes from top to bottom in the channel. So I've put this on this new effect on, and now we can listen to what this new effect sounds like. <laughs> so 
So what um, what I'm able to do is bypass the effect with this sort of power button. This effect is um, mimicking a guitar amplifier. So, um, so, so that's why it, ha it has this sort of like guitar distortion um, sound. Uh, what and I can and again when I say bypass, you'll hear that um, when, as soon as I hit this activate button, uh, what happens is. Uh, the signal just skips this effect. So I will start with it bypassed, uh, and then then I'll turn it on again and then turn it off again. Okay, so the signal is so the signal is either bypassing the effect or going through the effect. The signal is always going all the way through the channel and to the master. Um, now, let's see. Uh, okay, so let so I I threw this uh, this effect on here for right now. I'm going to leave it bypassed because I want to emphasize the uh, how um, the ordering of effects eff um, is important. So right now I'm leaving that bypassed, and in the end I will not be using this this effect. I'm really gonna I really want to focus on the effects that I set up first. So. What I'm going to do is we're going to start with the delay. So here is what is the delay that I have created for this rhythm track. So I have that rhythm right that is done, done. Dun 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 and I've put a delay on top of it that kinda gives it like a dun to dun to dun 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 dun So let's look at let's look at this beat delay effect. Again, the way that I put it on here is I found it over to over in uh my uh what do they call this? Right, the browser in my browser window. And I found it under the delay folder, and I just dragged it over, and I put it onto the channel, uh, the channel strip. So, so I'm gonna open it up. I'm just gonna sort of double click on it, and here is the the faceplate. The the way these are all the knobs that I can manipulate on on this effect to. Uh, produce whatever it is that I want to do to to change the sound of my rhythm track. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with it bypassed. Then I will turn it on, and I and I want you to sort of pay attention to this how the sound changes when I change different knobs or different parameters. So I'm going to be changing. I'm going to be moving some of these knobs around, and then. I will just I will t discuss briefly like what exactly is happening and why we hear the difference when I move different knobs. So uh, I will start with it bypassed, then I will activate it, and then I will change the way that the delay is happening. Like I'll change different aspects of the delay, and then talk a little bit about why those changes on the knobs of changed the sa change what we hear. Okay, so here we go.
Okay, so uh, I was playing with, I was changing the, uh, I was turning the knobs on, on, on uh, just a couple of different parameters here on this delay effect. So as a reminder, we've got uh, the signal coming in, the, what the delay is doing is sort of taking a picture of that signal at a particular rate and sending that picture back, and then that picture then becomes part of the input. So you get input, you take picture of the input, you send that picture back at a particular uh, speed, and then that picture becomes a part of the input, and, and so you have a loop happening. So um, the rate at which the picture is being taken is the delay time. Uh, here with this particular delay effect in Studio One, uh, we think of it as, you know, that w they call it beats. So the delay time is linked always to the tempo of the, of the track. And um, the delay time is now going to be in, uh, in terms of um, uh, re the relationship to the, to, the, to the grid, really. So, um, so I have this rhythm happening on, on the grid, right? And really, it's like um, it's they're happening only on quarter beats. Um, or if I z let me z let me just zoom in um, so that this is clearer for for those of you who aren't super familiar with this musical terminology. So each, if I'm looking at the grid, right? This these numbers tell me that this is one measure of four four. So one two three four. So twelve two three four. 13, 2, 3, 4, 14, 2, 3, 4. If I were to change the the delay time over here um, in the beat delay to one quarter, um, it's going to be sending back that picture every quarter quarter beat, right? So one, so every so one, two, three, four. Every time I count, the delay is sending back that picture by one beat. So let me zoom out a little bit. So, okay, so I've changed, now I've changed the delay time to one quarter and see if, what I, what I will do is try to change, so it's, we're gonna start at one quarter. I'm going to then change it to one half, which is every other quarter. So it's like uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, something like that. And then I'll switch it back to what I had originally, which is every uh, three sixteenth notes. So there are four sixteenth notes in a quarter beat. So I think you should start to, you'll, you'll hear it. You'll hear why it gets kind of funky when I set it to three, to, uh, three sixteenth notes. So it's, I, again, I'll start where the de delay time is one quarter. I will switch it to one half, which is uh, two, whole qu two quarters. And then I'll switch it back to what it originally was, which is three sixteenths. Um, just don't worry about all that right now. Just listen to the difference. you can kind of visualize the difference between those three settings if I zoom in a little bit. So, so when we started, it's like the, every, every sound is being shifted back by a quarter beat. And then we hear the, the, re, the result of the combination. So you can kind of think of here, we have this pattern, right? That is happening. Uh, we have this hit, um, let me turn off the delay. So uh, I'll, I'll just play one time through the pattern. So when we had when I had the delay on every quarter, you would you would you would expect to hear. So instead of dun, 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 
dun 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 you'd expect to hear dun 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 because really the delayed signal is like the same as if you know now we're now that we're uh familiar with moving this uh, these um moving these uh bits of audio around uh it would whoops i did not mean to do that um it's the same as taking this pattern right copying it and then and then putting it on another track right and like so so now like all i did was copy that pattern i went one quarter beat ahead and pasted that pattern here and that's similar to what i would be doing with with a digital delay but what so so then you may be wondering well why not just do that why not just make two different tracks copy the pattern and um and 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 just be done with it well the reason is that we we are able to change the feedback we're able to change the 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 rate of the delay right so if i were to just copy this pattern and decide all right well i want to delay my pattern by one quarter beat and then just reduce the volume a little bit to create a sort of echo effect, I would not be able to create feedback. So feedback is like, every, you know, now if I'm, it's, it is how much of my delay line will then be sent back into the, sent back into the delay and back and back and back. So the more I increase the feedback, the more I increase, um, I in increase the amount of the delayed signal that's being sent back into itself. So, uh, so that's why when I increased the, f when I turned the feedback knob to the right, it got to a point where it totally washed out everything. Um, I'm also able to mix, I also messed around with mixing the, the dry signal with the delayed signal. So if the effect is all the way to, if the mix, uh, knob is all the way to the left, we only hear the, uh, the the signal that's into that that's coming into the input or, and um uh it's essentially like we we just hear the bypassed signal the more that i the more that i turn the the mix knob to the right the more we just hear the what is called the wet signal so dry and wet so um so really the mix is like how much of the effect is is being um Ba you know, it's like a balance of dry to wet in the overall output of the effect itself. So um, now, what I was able to do by creating, so I have a rhythm that's happened that is really only playing on uh, half notes or uh, or quarter notes, and then if I threw in a, a dotted sixteenth, it kind of gave it this funky feel. Let me uh, now. Let's open up. Uh, some other effect the other effect that i have in this uh, in this effect line in this signal chain so before we get to the to the beat delay i have put in this channel strip now i'm going to open that up and i'm going to activate it so what this what how i'm using this channel strip right here is really just to filter the sound and what you will see here in this window is um, uh, along the the uh, y-axis is uh, decibels or amplitude, and this is going and this is going to be how much I add or take away in amplitude. So if it's along zero, I'm not anything along this zero line means I'm not changing the sound. If I bring the if I bring this any of these handles below the zero line it will reduce the amplitude if i bring it above it will increase it um along the x-axis you will see frequency so hertz right 80 hertz 200 hertz 800 hertz 2000 hertz etc so amplitude frequency so and frequency here is going from low to high now, so that means that I can increase the amplitude of high sounds, or I, just high sounds. I can decrease the amplitude of low sounds, just the low sounds. And what this is called is called filtering. 
So what what I will do is I will play this rhythm track with the delay, and I want you to pay attention to how the sound is changing when I start moving these filters around. And when I say moving these filters around, what I will be doing is two things at the same time, because right, I will be changing um, the filter in relation to both the x-axis amplitude and, uh, sorry, the y-axis amplitude and the x-axis frequency. So pay attention to how that results in uh, the, the, the changing sound. Okay, so I'm going to press play. Okay, so the what I'm doing is I'm just moving around this one filter um, it, within this channel strip effect. I can I can have multiple filters, like I could increase the highs and and simultaneously de increase decrease the lows, for example. So uh, let me press play. <laughs> Let's say you're messing around with these filters and you're like, I really like the sound of that, of this changing, of these changing filters, right? So, um, so like you want that, that the sound of the, of the ch filter moving. Um, so you can automate that. Now, if I go to, if I automate, right? So now I'm going to, uh, let's see. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Right. Do, 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 do. So if I go back to channel strip and right. Um, so if I S right next to my bypass, my power activate bypass button. If I click on this, this allows, uh, this will allow me to automate. Hold on, let me make sure I'm doing this correctly. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, I had to make sure that I was doing this correctly. Uh, so. The, the, you need to make sure that um, here on your, uh, here on, within the effect that your, that automation is activated. So read. And then if I go into, if I go over to my track and my <clears throat> automation, show automation, uh, button is selected. So I've selected this, this is, you know, I've selected this and I, that would allow me to automate uh, volume and panning, but I can add another automation uh, layer. And what I would do is, so these are the layers that ha have already been added. Um, and what I can do is, and volume and panning is going to be automatically added to to any tr to uh, the automation on any track. I can go over into this over here on these this parameter side. These are all of the um, these are all of the 
knobs, parameters that I can automate. And each effect is going to, I can automate any, any knob on any effect. So I ha so um, th obviously this can become really complicated really fast. And this is why they don't automatically uh, set up all of this stuff to be automatable on a track because you don't want to necessarily deal with all of this stuff. So really what I was doing before was moving the, um, the high... Uh, the high filter frequency. So I, what I'm going to do is I go to, over to my inserts. I find the effect that I want to automate. I open up that drop down folder, and here are all of the knobs, right? So, um, so, and I can look at I can look over here, and what I and the knob that I was as I was moving this um, as I was moving this handle on the filter from left to right, what it was was the, oh yeah, it turns out that it was the um, mid, the green mid filter, and what it really I was trying, I was keeping it at this high decibel level, but I was changing the frequency. So what I was changing was the m frequency of the, m of the middle filter, okay? So if I select this, and I add it. I now will. I what has happened over here is I've added this automation, uh, uh, added new automation to this track. And so now, just like with, just like uh, with, um, changing volume and panning over a track, I can change the filter frequency uh, cutoff or. Um, the frequency of the filter. So now, if I do this, right, um, what we should see is something like the changing filter effect that I was that I was uh, that I was creating just by moving this around. But it will be automated. <laughs> I have so now we've t we've walked through how delay works and how filtering works, and also automating uh, parameter changes for effects. Next, I want to talk briefly about um, putting putting these effects in different orders and why that matters uh, as far as the, the the output of the sound, and then uh, I'll kind of. Uh, then I'll move over to just listening to all f all three of these tracks, do a little bit of mixing, and then I'll be done for today. I promise. Okay, so uh, now we're gonna use we're gonna throw this empire uh, effect into the chain, and I'm gonna start moving it around and and put it in uh, put these effects in different orders so that you can hear uh, that. Again, we'll be able to, what we'll be hearing is the signal path right because the signal path is going from top to bottom so if it if it reaches that filter that i was just changing first before it reaches the delay before it reaches the distortion that is going to have a different effect than if it hits the distortion first and then the filter so um let's start with th creating a slightly less intense distortion and looks like if I drive, do, do, do. okay. So um, what I'll do is I'll start just by playing this uh, loop. Then I will start moving this empire effect into different spots, different uh, slots in this in the signal path. Okay. <laughs>
So it's subtle, but the thing you probably the, the thing you should be able to hear is that when I put the guitar amp after the filter change that I just automated, it's harder to fill it's harder to hear the filter change. And the reason for that is, like I was just talking about with distortion, what distortion does is it um, squares off the waveform, creating new harmonics. So all of that high information or low information that the filter is producing is that is the filter itself will be distorted, right? So by distorting that filter change, um, it it hides it more. If I put the the distortion before uh, before the filter in the signal path, it will we will hear the filter more clearly because the filter is filtering the distortion, right? So what I'm gonna we'll, we will start with the distortion distorting the filter, and then I will move the distortion to before the filter in the signal chain. In other words, the filter will suddenly be filtering the distortion. And we will see how it's much easier to hear that filter change once I've changed the um, the si the the uh, path or the the order of operations in this signal chain. So again, I'll press play, and at that point, the distortion is at the very end of our signal chain, meaning this it is the filter that's being distorted. Then I will move the distortion to at the very beginning of the signal chain, meaning it is the distortion that is being filtered. you can kind of see what I mean when I say when I start moving the effects around in the signal chain you can hear the signal chain itself all right so we've so now we've talked about the order of operations and signal chains uh, what I'm gonna do is play I'm going to now allow us to hear all of these uh, all of these layers um, at once and then I will start talking about mixing them all together, and that will be the end of this lecture. So here we, so here we are. I'm going to be, uh, we're going to be listening to all the layers at once now. Not no longer will it just be this rhythm layer, but we'll hear the horns and we'll hear this sort of like uh, symbol swell that I created. Um, so. And then I'm going to move over to my, uh, I will open up my console view or my mixing view. And we will, and I'll kind of demonstrate how by just mixing these, these different tracks together, you can get different sorts of effects. So uh, here is how the mix, well, yeah, here, let me open up the console view. Um, so here's, here is my console view. I'm only dealing with really uh, the rhythm, brass, and this cymbal swell track. Um, and I will press play, and then I'm going to start changing. I'm going to start changing things on the on these faders to emphasize like what happens when all of these channels get mixed together, and how and how they can combine in different sorts of ways. So.
so all I was doing was riding the fader on the the brass track, and I took it out, and then I and then I faded it back in. And I was and what I was doing is I was listening for how all of these different uh, channels were um, combining. And as I brought the the brass the distorted brass slowly back in, eventually I got to a point where I brought the the volume. Uh, up up to about zero decibels and then I saw over here at, on my master track um, that this number turned red okay so what this number is doing is what this number and this red you know this uh, this box is doing is it's following the output of the master and it's telling me what levels of output um, what uh, it's making comparisons between the output and the input, right? So all of these tracks are combining and and being and they're being fed into my my master channel here, and and then and then out to my speakers. So once uh, once all of these things are added together, they and they combine, they give us a certain decibel reading. Now, when I see this red light up, what this is telling me is. Um, I just redlined, which is pretty much the same as distortion. So all of these tracks here were adding together so much that they went over zero decibels over here in my master. And that means once they go over that, if I were to write this to file, if I were to write to this song to file, um, those moments would be distorted. They would be... Um, squared off in the way that distortion happens. Now, sometimes we use distortion because we like how it sounds. Um, in this case, we don't like this because, uh, because we can't, we, we, this is not a type of distortion that we can really control very well. We want the distortion to happen earlier in the signal path because we can, can control it. If we are getting clipping on our master, this is not going to come across as intentional or as having sort of an aesthetic th uh, thing. It basically is going to come across as digital distortion. So what I'm doing as I am mixing is I am keeping track. I, I am looking at my master and I'm seeing how, how what sort of decibel levels am, am I getting when all of these channels are combining. You'll notice that I've the volume on each of these channels is relatively uh, well. It's not at zero, so I have this rhythm track that is at negative five decibels. I have right now the trumpet or the brass track is at negative nine decibels. The cymbal swell is at negative eleven decibels. And the reason that I that I'm doing that is because these are all adding up, right? When they get when they reach my master track, they um all of the 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 energy all of the sound that's in all of these tracks when it when it reaches the master channel is combining so in general when you're mixing your channels are not going to be at unity or at zero um, because if they all are if all of these tracks have been recorded uh, so that the waveforms are relatively hot um, when they add together um, it will be so much amplitude so much volume that uh, they will combine to redline to be pushing the volume in your master track beyond its window so um, when you are mixing follow that be looking at uh, this is the main thing that that we're going to be learning about about um, monitoring mixes is that you are monitoring the master channel and looking for what you know what sort of when all of these things combine what sort of decibel readings are you getting so i'm going to press play again <laughs> Thank you. 
what what I was doing as I was kind of mixing this is I was both listening for how the tracks, um, you know, making sure that the the I have the right level on the tracks in comparison with one another, so that I don't have too much brass or I don't have too much rhythm. But I'm also looking at the master channel, and I am monitoring how close I'm getting to uh, to redlining, how close I'm getting to um, uh, to an out these like these these peak meters right here are are telling me how close I'm getting to zero decibels. If I go over zero decibels, that's going to create clipping when I mix down. So I want to keep these under zero, the, the these numbers here, and I want to look for any time that um, that my my main mix on my master channel uh, red lines, which is going to tell me, or clips, um, which is going to tell, and, and this box over to the right is going to tell me when that happens. Okay. So today was a lot of information. Here are the things that I want you to do based on this information. Uh, one, now that you have loaded some audio, you're working on your sound collage assignment and you've loaded some audio into studio one, you are going to experiment with effects on your audio tracks. Tracks. In order to do that, uh, just open up the browser window, go to the effects tab, and you will be able to find all of these effects in there. So. Um, you have a delay effect, or just some di two distortion effects, effects. I'm using Studio One Four, so maybe they've added a couple more. So there, there are effects for you to use, and I only went over delay and one type of distortion. I encourage you to um, experiment just by dragging different effects in onto a onto a channel and playing around with the knobs on the faceplate of those effects. Um, so, so that you can now, you know, sort of experiment with these signal chains and experiment with how effects change the quality of a sound. So I want you to experiment with that. And before the next time we meet, I want you to upload some sketches. So what you will do is you'll come up with a particular sketch. Maybe you've used, uh, yeah, any sort of sketch, uh, uh, that, can represent an idea that you're working on for your sound collage. The way you will do that is you will set a loop around whatever section of the sound collage you want to mix down. You will go to song, export mix down, between loop, na for, name it whatever you want to, mix it down. Uh, that will give you a short wave file and you will be able to upload that wave file to Blackboard, I will create a, um, I will create a discussion forum. That way, everyone will be able to upload their wave files to Blackboard, and we can listen to high quality versions of your sketches directly from Blackboard. So we'll be listening to the wave files, not to something that is being um, streamed over Zoom. And then we can have some discussions about the uh, about the work that you're doing. So I'd like the next time we meet. We will go over these effects, but I really kind of want to spend more time on your own work. So uh, be ready to, you know, try to get a, a short little sketch done, upload it to Blackboard, and we will talk about it the next time that we see one another. All right, everyone, have a wonderful afternoon, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.